Hello and welcome to another episode of eBay Scavengers. This is episode number 105 at ebayscavengers.com. And we are asking the question, are you a scavenger? We're going to explore this because the reason why I wanted to do this, because we get questions almost every week from people who ask, <laughs> how do I know what to look for? You how know? do I know what to buy? What should I buy? Yeah. <laughs> but the answer, a lot of times, I don't really know how to answer that because I feel for us, it's pretty easy. It seems to just come, it's naturally like we just go out into the world and you just see stuff and it, you're like, of course I'm going to buy that. You know? I mean, but the other thing too is it's it's really different for everyone. So I guess that's something we wanted to explore today and maybe we'd love to hear people talking about their experience in the uh, comments of the blog post because my feeling is, is that, I know it sounds weird, but like, are people born scavengers? Because mm-hmm. I kind of feel like I've always just had that it's natural inclination to find things for cheap and to right. like, seek them out. You know? Or is it like, you know, sort of passed down from your parents? I mean, I definitely had that passed down from my parents. Like my dad is like borderline hoarder, you know, like he, he'll be like, look at this awesome piece of wood. I'm just going to keep it in the basement for 30 years, <laughs> you know, whether that's good or not. But, you know, like, you know, I, I see something in everything, you know, almost everything like, right. oh, that could be something that is something. Yeah, I do wonder if it's how people are brought up, because I definitely have never had a, any part of my body or mind crave expensive items like you know yeah. i grew up with kids and they'd really be into like buying nice shoes and nice clothes and nice cars and i never had any of that any i didn't that, yeah. i was a kid that would go to like old at record stores and try and find albums i remember my dad would take me and my uh, sisters to at goodwill to buy clothes well it's and, funny uh, that you say that because my dad also brought us to goodwill to buy clothes like there's something about cheap dads yeah. That uh, <laughs> infuses that in you. And I, I also want to say a lot of people who are artists naturally have it because you're making something out of nothing. That's that's a lot of times what art is. You're just like making something that didn't exist out of like, you know, stuff that is not traditionally thought of as like a cool material. So, yeah, I guess for some reason, I just remember being a kid and I found it more interesting and exciting to get something that I knew had some kind of history to it. So, you know, I was one of those kids that loved getting the old jacket, and I just loved it because (laughs) I felt like it had a story to it. Right, right. That's what was interesting to me. I remember it's my dad. I mean, he, you know, my grandpa, I guess, was like an immigrant coming over from England, and, you know, he was just like kind of a carpenter, handyman guy, total scavenger my dad did much better for himself got educated and i remember he would laugh because he would say you know jay i go to these business it's meetings <laughs> and i'm sitting there and you know there are people who have really nice clothes on and i have decent clothes too but i just laugh because i bought it all to all at goodwill right you know? right like he was still proud of the fact that he could hang with the uh, rich people and yeah and it didn't matter yeah. i mean and i think now the thrill for me is finding something cheap or for free. Like there is nothing more fulfilling for me, yeah. <laughs> which sounds yeah. crazy, <laughs> but to like scavenge something <laughs> of value that I got for next to it's nothing. nothing. Like after this podcast, we're actually going to go to the next town over because there's a Kmart that's going out of business. <laughs> Which all the retail arbitrage people are like jealous of hearing right now. <laughs> I'm sure that they're, yeah, and I'm sure people are scanning in there. But what we saw was outside where they saw like plants and all. There are all these plants that it's, we want. And I bet they're super dirt cheap. And so we're actually going to drive over there because we have a lot of space that we're trying to it grow stuff in and that is so exciting right it's like it's like we're making a day of it because we're just like yay that's so awesome like it's like it's almost like you beat the system you know (laughs) but i I also want to mention too like a lot of us grew up in the 80s and 90s you know we're in high school and college when when like grunge was really like a big deal like grunge and punk And I feel like that had a lot of influence on us, like the whole DIY culture of like, 
you don't need to buy it. You need to make it yourself. Like, actually, a lot of the music we were influenced by was like, you don't need to listen to the crap on the radio. You need to be in your own band. So that that for me was a huge influence of like, you don't have to look like you you know, are a magazine model, you can, you know, wear crazy clothes that you found at the thrift store and look even cooler than those people. And it, it doesn't matter, you know? And so that was part of our culture of like yeah. wearing your dad's old flannel was actually like the height of fashion at that time, you know? And I think that's what's interesting though. I think a lot of us are like that, you know, scavengers in that way. It's interesting. It took a while for us to realize you could make an income out of it. And I think right. that's the real change. And I think one reason why we do this podcast to try and talk to the other people that are natural scavengers, you know, if you've always like gathered and collected and found stuff, but you never thought of it as an income, right. as a goal to be independent. Because, you know, like, uh, I mean, we lived in, uh, it's New York and San Francisco. A Cisco, and each time we would make a move to a new apartment, you especially would sell yeah. everything we have on eBay or Craigslist. Yep, I sold everything. I, I when we moved from New York, we were moving across the country, so you really have to pare down. I mean, we didn't have a lot of stuff anyway in New York, but we had two beds. I mean, like you know? we were driving in we're a driving in a car, a in tiny a hatchback, tiny car, and so basically anything we owned had to fit in that car. It was like our cat and our laptops, basically, and like some clothes. So yeah, everything had to go. I had a record player. I had like we had two desks. We had all these like silverware. <laughs> we just like actually the idea was we'll sell it all on Craigslist and eBay. And then we'll just buy it all again on Craigslist and eBay in the next city. Yep. And that's what we did. And it totally worked. <laughs> I mean, it was stuff that was not sentimental. It was like, I don't care about this. You know, and, you know, and, and it's interesting. Even having done that, we it still didn't really click with us that we could do that on a regular basis a, and make in a, li- yeah. a living. Because I think we were just focused on we were doing other kinds of work and this idea. We're of focused a on the tech world. Career, you know, right. it's like it didn't seem... Until 2008, when we started selling on eBay, I was always more of a Craigslist person mm-hmm. anyway. Just like scanning the free stuff or scanning the Craigslist Well, Craigslist, like I lived in Boston, then we lived in New York, and then San Francisco. Those are huge metropolitan areas. I mean, New York is the biggest metropolitan area. So Craigslist and FreeCycle are on fire. I mean, you spend all day on those and just find stuff. You know, out here where we live now, that is not the case at all. Like Craigslist is a dead zone, except for, you know, near the cities. Yeah. So it's a little bit different, you know, scavenging here. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and that's why it was interesting talking to it's Ryan a week ago because he's a younger, he's 24, but he said he's been selling online for a while now. And it's just interesting. I wonder what my life would have been like if I had started to sell on eBay a lot earlier because <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of years of really being really poor mm-hmm. and working really hard at jobs I hated yep. and, uh, you know, always it's wishing to have a way out. And, you know, and I'd love to hear more young people that have been like, yeah, hey, I don't have to go work that job for eight, ten dollars an hour. I could just go sell. That's why I love. I mean, I loved talking to Ryan for that reason, because he was just like, great. He already started early he owns a house like that's amazing it's so good and and i guess this is what i'd love to hear people talk about in the comments like do do you think that you're a scavenger just because you're born that way (laughs) or have you taught yourself to be that way because i don't know if i've ever known someone that had never scavenged in their life and then suddenly started to do it because I just feel like I I can't help myself. You well, know? I feel like it it can also come as influence from other people or inspiration from other people, like whether it's a family member, you know, like your parents or a spouse. Like I see my mom. I mean, she's an eBay seller. She's a scavenger. That's where I learned from, from my parents. And she just got uh, married a couple of years ago and... Um, She's totally teaching her husband, like, and he'll go shopping with her all the time and be like, I like, oh, check out this Ralph Lauren, you know, bed skirt. And she's like, 
I can't believe you found that. Right. <laughs> you know? Huh. So it's like he's like learning what the what the scavenger like laser <laughs> vision is, you yeah. know? So I think it can be learned, but but how long does it take to learn it and hone it and have it be uh, uh, an income generator, yeah. you know? That's a, that's a great question. Another reason why when we wanted to do this podcast and try and gather other people around us who did this was because I need other people who share that excitement, that yeah. crazy excitement you get when you go to an auction or a yard sale. And you find something. Or even more, <laughs> when you're driving down the street and you see stuff on the side of the road. Like, I am one of those people, I will slow down and I will look, I'll stop my truck yep. and see is what it is, you know? Because I found stuff that people are just putting on the side <laughs> yep. of the road because they're too lazy to throw it away. Valuable you know? stuff. It's like um, when Breezy told us about that auction the other day. She knew she could tell us and the other eBay scavengers because she knew we totally understood it. And if she told someone else, like, just random in her town, they'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess what we're trying to do is we're really trying to, you know, kind of just brainstorm out loud. This idea of being a scavenger, I think, is so important to a running a successful eBay business, you know, because that is really the a value that we bring to the table. You know, we're we all have the skill of going out into the world and finding these items that are basically either being thrown away or donated or they're really cheap. And you have the skill to seek it out and find it and then to offer it to people. To know the value. I yeah. mean, that, that, that's part of it is to look at something and know right away someone And because wants that. you got it so cheap or because I got it so cheap, I can sell it for a less than what someone would buy it brand anew, you know? Or, or even used, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, or. Lower than other people selling it used. <laughs> or finding these items that you just can't find anywhere. Right. You know, and, re you know, and putting it back into the a system. And I think that's important for us, too. You know, I think there is obviously a fine line between being a scavenger and being a hoarder. Yep. And, you know, I don't say that as a joke. I mean that as a very a yep. serious thing because we definitely run across the people at the flea markets where you park in the parking lot and there's a car next to you <laughs> with stuff falling out of the car. Like, this isn't, you know, they just stuffed it for the a weekend. Like, that's what their, their car, car looks always like. looks yeah. like. And, you know, and, you know, we've seen the TV shows. It can be a problem. Right. I think for us... Being a scavenger means what we scavenge, there's a reason for it. So for us, selling on eBay yeah. is our purpose, you know. Right. Um, I think that's one reason why before we sold on eBay, I wasn't scavenging and bringing stuff home all the time. It was just when I needed stuff. Right. Um, you know, and we don't really collect. I guess if we collect anything, it might be we're starting to collect art it seems yeah like. we, we've been <laughs> we, collecting art and we have all these blank uh, walls in our house and we're like finding cool art you know we just put that up um but i think the beauty of ebay too is and we've talked about this before it really does allow you to kind of fulfill that need for <laughs> curating or collecting but the whole point is to turn it over like i remember the first time that it it clicked for us when you put that jacket on it was a members only jacket and we were at the thrift store and and we were both like someone in brooklyn would buy this oh wait and then we looked around the store and we're like someone in brooklyn would buy this whole freaking store so let's buy tons of stuff and yeah. sell it to those people <laughs> so i think especially if you're explaining it to people that don't scavenge i mean i think healthy scavenging is when you actually complete the, the cycle, a yeah. circle. Yeah, you know, exactly. you scavenge it, and then you find someone that uh, needs it, or I need it. You know, right? But it's not helpful if I'm scavenging and then just hoarding it, and then it becomes a dead end. Like right. I'm not doing this to create a dead end. I'm creating it to like keep things flowing. Right. You know, and you know we've talked about it. It's before all of us are doing what has been going on for centuries. Right. Probably thousands of years. You know, there's always been a portion of the population that are collecting things and reselling it. You know? Right. You know, I think of like early America, you know, like people yeah. are just like 
selling rags and like yeah, yeah. stuff. I mean, and we're just kind of like the new 21st century techies who are doing that, you know? Right. And our scavenging, as we've said, it's before, extends to our everyday its needs. So we actually scavenge for our as groceries. Right. So we actually are very lucky in our area. We have this crazy grocery outlet that we are in love with. Like we drive an hour just to it's get It's called there. Sharp Shopper. If you're in our area, <laughs> they have them in Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland. Like there's a bunch of them. Sharp Shopper is amazing. So, you know, a place like that, we get really spoiled because we're like, Everything in the store is like basically 50 cents to a dollar. I mean, I'm sure that they have these stores in other parts of the country too, where there are these outlets that buy food that is near expiration date right. or past expiration date. And I guess that may turn some people off, but, you know, expiration dates are actually more of a, a suggestion. suggestion yeah. Or some companies put it on there to force. Uh, stores to take them off their shelves so they have to buy more right. items and so we it love it and like it's ryan says i mean we we have more food in our house and we know what to do and with. i'm not talking about junk food i'm talking about like gourmet all natural organic foods i mean they have a bunch of junk food there but this stuff we buy is like this super fancy stuff that's like you said near expiration like i want to point out one score that we got that I will forever like <laughs> color every score we happened to be at sharp shopper and they had this big huge block of cheese it was like seven pounds of cheese and we're looking at it we're like that kind of looks like gourmet cheese and it's a dollar a pound which if anyone knows is an insanely cheap price for very nice cheese and they had a ton of it so we bought it all and um, it lasted us, I think it lasted us six months. Yeah, because we have a freezer. I'm sure if you're a scavenger, it's like us. you got to have a freezer. And we actually have two of them. And that yeah. saves everything. I think I, I almost cried when it was done. <laughs> I ate the last piece, the very last piece. And I was like, ah. but, you know, th that's the beauty of scavenging. I mean, I would never buy, you know, cheese for $12, you know, $15 a pound because I just can't afford that, you know. Yeah. But to find that score, it's like you're like, I beat the system. I found this and it costs almost nothing. I mean, some other examples are, you know, so we bought this house a couple with three, four years ago, no, four years four ago. Four years ago. And, you know, we have a yard was in really bad shape. A big yard, too. And we've been slowly <laughs> planting things to make right. the yard look nice and just because it's a good thing. To, and it's to fun. do, and I you like know that plants are very expensive. Expensive, yeah. But you know what? Part of scavenging is meeting people. So you know, it's going out and making a network of people who can help it you scavenge. So like, I found a woman that has a couple of horses, and they make a lot of poop. Right. <laughs> and she doesn't want this. So every She's a not year, a gardener, so right. she doesn't want the manure. Every a year I go over to her house and she's got a huge pile. I probably get ten truckloads so much of this already aged horse poop that just becomes our garden beds. And it's basically already dirt. Or right. soil, you would call it. And, it, you know. and so that's free. I mean, you know, we talked about in that a video where I showed our a wood stove. We get 80% of our wood free just because people are cutting down trees. They don't want the wood. It's already cut up, and I get to go pick it up for free. Mostly because they live in the suburbs, so they don't have, like, a wood stove, you know. Like, most people in the country have a wood stove. And, you know... Uh, just a couple of big oak trees yeah. can keep us heated for a season. It's really amazing. So another thing that we scavenge for, for compost for our gardens that we grow our own food in is you can go to Starbucks or your local coffee shop and you can ask them to hold the coffee grounds for you because that is great material for a compost bin. Yeah, and Starbucks especially, I mean, they go through so much coffee. Every day, so much. You know, when, when we go to an auction, there's always a Starbucks close by, and so we'll just stop by. They'll give us a trash bag full of coffee grounds, and I'll just throw it in the compost. And then, you know, takes six months or so, and that becomes 
dirt soil, right. like really a luscious black gold. Yeah. And again, this is, you know, anyone that's gone to the store, you got to pay for a soil. I mean, potting soil, if you're just going to do house plants or little seedlings or whatever, that stuff is expensive. But if you're also, I mean, we're actually doing huge garden beds. I mean, that, you know, buying it by the truck full, it's expensive. Oh, it's so, really expensive. Uh, it's just, it's all out there. I mean, we've said it. America is such a country of abundance, overabundance, and so it's just about kind of grabbing it. And make those connections. So if you have a local coffee shop or a Starbucks near you, um, we don't have one very nearby, but you can call ahead and just say, hey, I'm going to swing by this afternoon. I would love to take your coffee grounds, and that is an awesome, awesome resource. And then we talked about how we have a rental house and we're starting to look at a furniture on uh, on, on Craigslist. Craigslist. And a lot of times what we'll do is we will either go to Ikea or go, I think a lot of people do this, or go on the Ikea website. And they have those funky names for, you know, couches and stuff. So we throw that name into Craigslist. We're like, we want this style couch. And we do an alert. You can set up an alert um, on Craigslist. So anytime anyone posts the couch or the bed with that name, it emails you right away. Yeah. So we are very obsessive about that. And going back to the plants, so I made or we made a, a friendship with a woman in our county who turned out that she's a big gardener. And we told her we were looking for plants. And she said, come over on Saturday. And we've been over there probably 10 times. And she just has a beautiful garden. She knows all the plants. And she just is giving us plants. like Because we'll, she's thinning them out. She's like, okay, this is way overgrown. Take like half this stuff. It's I out mean, of control. We have driven away numerous times with a truckload, my whole bed full of plants that would probably cost us three to $400 easy. Each time. I mean, it just like even if you want to buy daylilies, like the cheapest daylilies that are orange, you know, they're the cheapest color you can get. It still costs twenty five to fifty dollars to buy those bulbs. And if you're a scavenger, then you know the feeling I have right now, and that is, that is so much more fulfilling to me than having the you know having a credit card going to a Lowe's, putting stuff from the car and just buying it from a cashier. You know, it's. For some reason, the ability to make that connection with someone in our county, to make a friendship, to get the stuff, to you know, to to dig it out of the ground, it's myself. Just it's right, and not pay any money at all. It's just time, right? And I think that's really being a scavenger is all about having time, and that's why eBay works for us because it gives us that time. You know, it gives us time to go and search and make the friendships because you know when we've had jobs. And we're working, it's 40 and... Yeah, it's, you, you don't know, have time. Or it's more hours. There's just no time to scavenge, you know? No times to to make connections with people and learn about people. And, you know, an auction's happening at 2 o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. I mean, I can't do that, you right. know? So that's completing the a circle. Owning our time. Doing more scavenging. Saving more its money. Making more money by selling on eBay. I mean, it's just... It's just like a spiral that only goes up, you know? I mean, I think that that's the reason why we love eBay as part of the homesteading circle of stuff that you can do is because for homesteaders, I mean, your time is everything because you want to make your own food, make your own clothes, you know, not have to depend on, you know, box stores and things like that. So that's... The whole thing, it's time or it's money. And if you don't need as much money, you have more time. So it's a, like you said, it's it's a big circle. Well, this was a very fun, philosophical (laughs) discussion. And we hope, you know, people have enjoyed it. And again, we would love to hear people's stories about when you realize if you're a scavenger or stories from when you were a kid or if you haven't ever been a scavenger and you're just now realizing you are one, I don't know. I would just yeah. love to hear from other people that this makes sense to you. I want to hear other people's perspectives because, like you said, we felt like we've had it since the beginning because our parents were like, here, here's 10 bucks, go to Goodwill. Yep. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> so how did you how did you do that even though you didn't have that influence? 